I'm di you're dying. Oh, your help. Oh, hang on. Visa, are you actually dying? Do you need me to give you some food? Visa, you're the cameraman. You can't die here, mate. You're getting the footage that's going to go on you. Trade with Josh Editor. Okay, I'm about to... Visa, I'm going to save your life, man. <laughs> You're like a combat cameraman right now, running in between the catablepans. Am I giving him the banana? Am I giving him a lobster? Trade lobster. How many? Your account is restricted. The trading lift the restrictions will lift in 16 hours. I cannot give you anything except good advice. Hang on. Has anyone else got any food they can give to Visa because he's literally dying? I thought I'd be the one to die. All right, we're following you, Daddy. Daddy, take me where you need to take me. Don't clip that. There's a lot of context required for that to make sense. And if you haven't been in the stream for at least three hours, it's going to sail over your head. And I feel that you're going to judge me unfairly based on the context entirely of that clip, which doesn't fit into the greater narrative of what we've already experienced. Okay, Daddy, open my door. Same with that. Uh, Krom says, I'm clipping my toenails right now, and that's the right thing for this stream. You know what? It is. Whenever I sit down to stream, I always think what kind of vibes I'm going for, and I thought, this is a very much a, a Krom clipping his toenails vibe of stream. I'm really glad I was able to hit that, because uh, many people have told me it's a very specific market, and uh, if I aim for that, I'm, I'm really reducing my demographic, but I'm glad that nearly a thousand people woke up today and thought, that's the vibe they want. I'm glad we got there. New Mike, you say. Is it ASMR time? It can be. What do you want me to read? Do you want me to read some magic cards ASMR style? Yorg Moth. Thrawn Physician. Too generic. Too black. Legendary creature. Human cleric. Protection from humans. Pay one life. Sacrifice another creature. Put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. Pay two black mana. Discard a card. Proliferate. Card number 431. Mythic. Dominaria remastered. Drawn by Greg Stables. Trademark. 2023 Wizards of the Coast Two power Four toughness 90% of you want me to pick up the book Are we- is that what we're doing now? Okay, fine You open the book And are surprised to see That the pages are hollowed out in the middle Lying in the cavity Is a small jewel On a silver chain Beside it is a parchment Which reads Eye of Amber. Instructions for use. Place the necklace around your neck and question those you fear. No matter what they try to say, it's only truth you'll hear. Walking along the narrow path, you notice a big cold tree to your left with a large hole in its trunk just above head height. If you wish to reach up and put your hand in the hole... Turn to 275. If you would rather continue walking the north, turn to 115. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to ask, do we continue the north, or do we fist the tree? Do we fist tree, or continue? Did the tree give consent? Uh, yes, en enthusiastic consent. It's encouraging us almost. Sean Connery time, continue with the Brian Blessed voice actor. I've got to move it away. Do Garth Marangi. You and he were buddies once. If you want to be buddies again, I won't stand in your way. I'm Garth Marangi, one of the few authors who has written more books than he's read. I love it. It is silly. Here we go. Right, what are we doing, guys? What are we doing? We already got bitten on the arm. Damn, Josh, have you done audiobooks? No, but I'm trying. 
I think the problem with me doing audiobooks is halfway through recording the audiobook, I start asking Twitch chat for advice, and then we just go off on random tangents for a while. They don't really respect that in the professional audiobook world. Richard Ayoade. Now, I can't do everyone. I can do like three impressions, and most of them are bad. Some people want to go out to the club. That's fine. I mean, I'm a, I'm a hip-hop happening dude. I go to a discotheque every now and again. I go to the club. I throw shapes. I walk up to the disc jockey. I'm like, yo, my brethren. Let's go down in Groove Town. Spin those tunes. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. I get on the floor. I throw shapes. You know? I'm known in all the boroughs. People think I'm cool. But sometimes you just don't want to do that. Sometimes you want to stay at home with a nice glass of rhubarb mead and play through a 30-year-old adventure book. And sometimes you want a, a British guy on the internet to read you that book while you sit at home and do whatever you want to do. And you know what? That's my demographic. I didn't say it was big, but it's what I'm going for. And that's what she said. I wish you were my boss so I could get scolded with this voice. Nancy, I don't want to hear you say that again, okay? I'm not happy with your work right now. You have been a very, very bad girl. And you need to book your ideas up. Because you will not last long if you don't start improving. Can you give me some improvement, Nancy? Can you make that happen? Be careful. If you keep going, he's going to draw his sword. Don't stand so close to me. Thanks, Sting. <laughs> That's a really specific joke. <laughs> I'm glad like five people in the chat will get. You call this entertainment? Oh, Chandler, I can get way worse, don't you worry about that. Lazy man mode seems depressing, to be honest. Mate, we're playing a 22-year-old children's medieval point-and-click game. Let's not bring up depression, we're all trying to beat that. This is what's meant to distract us from that. What is the game that I spent most of my time that I abandoned after an update ruined it? Oh, that would be Old School RuneScape, uh, back when it was just called RuneScape. And then the update was them going, hey, we've improved combat. And everyone collectively went, no, no, you haven't. And then they went, we have, trust us, RuneScape's better now. And then nobody played RuneScape 3. And then after a, a while they went, hey, we've brought old school back. And everyone was like, good. Good, this is good. Keep going. And now... RuneScape 3 is actually okay. Jagex Rock, pretty sure I've got told it ruined it every week for years. Well, Rock, that's unfortunately what happens when you put out an update that ruins a game. Um, you get reminded that that happened. I appreciate you being here, don't get me wrong. It's, it's lovely to see you coming out, repping the team. We've got Jagex in the chat. In fact, Rock, you could save us a lot of time right now. Um, the account name is Lazy Strife. Could you just, could you just mark all these quests as done? We could save a lot of time altogether. Could you just just give me a quest cape? You know, I'm trying. There's a chance. Don't don't ruin this guy. There's a chance he might do it. All right, they might. No, he's he's not going to do it. Okay, cool. I could un <laughs> I could uncheck them again. <laughs> Can you imagine if we finish this stream and Rock's like, do sheep herder again? Like, <laughs> I'd have a begrudging respect, like a really begrudging respect if you did end up doing that. I'd I'd hate it, but at the same time, I'd understand. You know, that kind of thing. Like, I, I think it was a, the wrong choice, but I'd get why you did it. Unlike Evolution of Combat, which was the wrong choice, and I did not get why you did it, but... No. Someone said, uh, exclamation mark rules in the chat. That's a good point. Uh, don't... That's the rule. Don't. If you're thinking, hey, maybe I should... No. But can I... No. But what if absolutely not? How about a little no? But a while ago, you'd know. Don't. That's the rule in this chat. Don't. Okay, look. I've given you Cat Cam as a favor. But if Cat Cam gets more popular than the rest of the stream, I will stop. We will turn this stream around and then nobody will have cat cam. Is the best way to determine someone's income by whether they think Five Guys is expensive? I don't care how rich you are, Five Guys is expensive. It is. Like, here's the, here's a weird thing. Here's a, a strange, strange thing, and I'll, uh, I'll always be honest with you guys as, uh, as viewers. I think it's very important to be honest, because 
I was watching one of my favourite YouTubers recently, a guy called Drew Gooden, and people might be thinking, Josh, you're going a bit off tangent here. You're going a bit off topic of RuneScape. You keep going on about wanting to finish RuneScape, and then you go off on long tangents. Listen, that's what this stream is. It's long tangents and then me complaining. I think Drew Gooden is one of the best YouTubers working in the world. He's phenomenally entertaining, a remarkably intelligent guy. I'd love to meet him one day. But he put out a really interesting video about when people lose relatability. About, I think it was the, the Ace family. I mean, the less said about them, the better in general. But they were like, oh no, guys, our house has so many rooms. It's effort to walk from the gym to the bedroom. And I'm like, oh my God, poor you. What a, what a terrible thing to struggle with. It must be so hard to not be able to walk from the gym to the bedroom without getting tired. But this idea of relatability. I grew up in a kind of lower middle class family. So we weren't always hurting for money, but we definitely weren't rich. That was the important thing. It was, um, you know, my, my, my parents did well by me as far as Christmas and birthdays went. And they had conversations with me and explained, look, we don't have an unlimited cash supply. We do have to be frugal with some things. We have to make sure we're... We're being sensible with what we do, and I respected that, and that gave me what I think is a very healthy grasp of money in general. And now YouTube and Twitch has been you know, remarkably good to me, and I'm in a much stronger position than I was. But despite that, I will still walk into a shop and go, 20 quid for a burger, are you taking the piss? I'll just go to the man with a kebab van and get £5 one from him, it's not a problem. What I think understands is, yes, I am no longer in the required situation to be as financially frugal as I was when I was younger, but that attitude hasn't left me. That's what I tend to find. I mean, people will say to me, oh, do you want to come for this really expensive £100 a head lunch? I'm like, no, no, I don't. That sounds, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure the food's delicious, but no, I'll just grab in some uh, some food for myself. I'll cook it at home. It's not a problem. You know, we'll get some mates around, we'll have a night of Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, throw some food on, watch a terrible film. Sounds fantastic. I'll do that instead. And one of those things, I think that if, if you grew up or if you raised or if you just had to live a portion of your life being slightly more frugal, that attitude doesn't leave you. And no, I don't have a gym in my house. Not yet. I need a couple hundred thousand more people to gift subs. Then I will get a gym in my house. People are like Magic the Gathering with proxies. Look, I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you want to proxy Magic the Gathering cards, go for it. I would much rather play against your imagination and your mind and your creativity than play against your wallet. If you turn up and say, hey, I want to play Warhammer against you, but all I've got are these like, you know, little cardboard stands with pictures that I've printed off, not a problem. Bang them on the table. Let's do this. If you've got a point-based army that you think you've put effort and time into and creativity and imagination, let's play against that. Not a problem at all. You know, if, I don't care if you turn up with Forge World. I don't care if you turn up with Cardboard. It's a game. And if you want to use the game pieces, that's fine. Let's use the game pieces. But when people say to me, oh, you can't use those game pieces. You didn't pay as much money as I did. I'm like, mate, we're not playing polo here. You know, it's not some kind of equestrian sport. You don't need to get out your entire team of horses. We're not racing Formula One cars against each other. We are playing with toy soldiers or little bits of card. Please, if you want to turn up with proxy stuff, turn up with proxy stuff. More than happy to play it. Yeah. If you're at a tournament where there's an actual prize on the line, where there's actual money and it's organised by the official makers of the thing, then, yeah, I could understand why that would be a, a slightly different scenario. But in general, can you please make your voice less posh? You sound rich. Giraffe, that is incredibly offensive of you, okay? I'm going to tell one of the three butlers to send you a lovely package of flowers uh, with a, an apology note saying that I am uh, remarkably, remarkably hurt by your, um, your astute observation and I shall reflect on it when I am in one of my three gymnasiums later on today. Possibly the middle gymnasium because that's closest to my third bedroom which is where I might sleep tonight. Josh, how expensive are Freddo's? Thank you, Harlequin. Freddo's are pushing 30p. What the fuck, Cabri? 15p maximum, mate. 10p when I was in school. What are you on about? Walking into Sainsbury's, 30p Freddo's. I'm like, Phew, that is broken Britain right there. That is ridiculous. I don't care how rich you get. 30p for a Freddo is a ripoff and no one's paying it. Right, back to uh, Assmazing. What are you trading me? As <laughs> I like how I interrupt my rant for... That's amazing. Why are you giving me 69,696 cups of tea, valuing 3.3 million? You've just put 69696 on the screen. I mean, I'll accept them because I am a tea goblin. I'm drinking a cup of tea right now. Thanks for the 69,000 cups of tea. Warframecraft, do you still make YouTube videos? 
Uh, no, uh, last week was my final week. I thought this was the one. I'm going to give up and stop now. Oh, fine. Have we got a... No, we're going to... Old, old fashioned. A, 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 B. No. A, 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 C. No. A, 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 D. No. A, 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 E. No. A, 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 F. No. Uh, some of you in the chat right now are actually concerned that I was going to go the entire way. But look, I will say the same thing to you that I've said to many people. I cannot last that long, and so I'm just going to do what the guide tells me. Am I the only person who still has to say the alphabet in their head when they're trying to go to a letter? Someone will say to me, you know, Hey, Josh, what comes after O? And I'm like, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. P. Like, every no, I'm that dumb too. Everyone, yeah, everyone has to do it. Everyone sings the alphabet song. And it will blow your mind when you realise the alphabet song has the same cadence as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It gets a bit crazy during the LMNOP part because that's like, that's the remix of the alphabet song. Yeah. Um, there's another one. It's also Bar Bar Black Sheep. No, that, there's what? Hang on. There's, there's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the alphabet song, and I'm sure there's another song that has that bit, but no, the, yeah, the, the alphabet song goes into like full on remix when you go into that one. What is it? So it's A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You guys are like going to, that's the bit. That's when you know, that's when it goes. When the L, M, N, O, P drops, you're like, yes. What voice should Dunstan have? He's a very tough, powerful blacksmith with his, his, Look at that. His potatoes everywhere, obviously. So he's got his vest on. He's standing there. I feel that Dunstan reminds me, if he's like this tough blacksmith who's just making things out of scrap, he reminds me of I Did A Thing. Hi. How you going? How scary is I Did A Thing on YouTube? I love him. I'm terrified of him, but I love him. Like, whenever I post a video, it's always like, how many bottle rockets do I need to strap to my face to reach space? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm going to watch, you know? I just, I just, how many swords can cut through a tank if fired from a slingshot? I don't know, but I'm going to watch you try. God, I love him so much. Oh, absolute banger. That's all you get. 69% of you want to slap the snake. That's a screenshot right there. Yeah, we uh, we may need to unequip. Remove it. I can't remove Excalibur. I've got to drop these desert robes because I've already got desert robes on. So the desert robes are being dropped. Armor and weapons are being removed. I think that's all of my... No, that can be removed as well. Is that everything? Escape cell window? You prepare to squeeze through. You need an extra pair of robes for the quest. Ah, oh, damn it. Hang on. Let me squeeze back in. Let me grab the desert shirt. What don't I need? Oh, God. I've got to drop something. Needle. I don't need the needle? Darcy, hang on. Darcy, I need you to take some of these things from me. Darcy, you're going to be a... um. I've got to trade with you for the time being. Darcy is an Iron Man. He stands alone. God damn it, Darcy. Ah, oh, non trady man. Can I just drop my shorts in the prison cell? That is not a sentence I thought I'd ever have to say. But desperate times call for desperate measures. I might need to drop my shorts in the prison cell. Drop shorts. It's alright guys, it's for the greater good. If I was going to make a, another video about old school RuneScape, it would be how many crimes do you commit in the process of getting a quest cape? Because we also, there's a, literally a quest called Regicide. You know, we kill a king. We kill men, king, two kings. One of them's Elvish, which I think is worse. Not sure where the hierarchy is, but like, that's, that's bad. You know, we burn a forest down. We kill some kind of dream creature. We've killed more mythical creatures than we can possibly remember. We commit a lot of crimes. Oh my god, I am the worst acrobat. Just get in the minecart. Who decided this is an agility check? Who? 
Who decided that that was fun? Gilinor is a truly unforgiving place. It is true. Slayer is a skill. What, do you mean uh, just killing things repeat? Oh, yeah, that's true. But, like, killing and killing monsters is different to killing, like, elected officials. <laughs> There's a difference there. Those zombies were hanging around doing nothing. That's okay. Walking up and just straight up nailing the king, and by that I mean, like, hitting it not that well. That's probably a crime as well, though, to be fair. Unless the king's into it, in which case he can pardon you. But you know what I mean. I love your YouTube content. It is the greatest channel. I'm going to stop reading your comment there because that is spot on correct. That's all I need to read. For washing dishes. Oh. I mean, I'm going to be real. That it, like, it, it took a dive. It's the greatest channel. Fantastic. For washing dishes. That's it's a much more specific niche. It's it's very it was a general excellence and then actually no you're only good at this. I'm sorry that you can't wash my channel. Wash my channel? You can't watch my channel when you're not washing dishes. That is a shame. I love your channel. It's perfect for smithing up gold bars in the blast furnace, but only gold bars, nothing else. If you begin to smith anything else in the blast furnace, you must change channel. That's how it works. You must do what all of us did last week and watch that one and a half hour video on that Doom mod level, My House. I can't have been the only one here that watched that. I like a bit of a creepy pasta video game thing. I'm a fan of Liminal Horror, House of Leaves style. We've all seen the Super Eye Patch Wolf video on Liminal Space, Liminal Horror. Horror is impossible. And the fact that I sat down on my sofa, turned on YouTube, see what's going on, and, hmm, one and a half, one and a half hour episode about a, a horror liminal doom level. I'm going to watch the entire thing. And it was bloody brilliant, wasn't it? I, I have a real thing about creepy pastas and the idea of haunted video games like Sonic.exe and Hero Brine and strange, creepy, weird levels. I love that. That to me, I think is super cool. And I genuinely think there's something uh, beautiful about taking the idea of unexplainable horror and connecting it with something as massive and as fascinating as video games. Long-form content like that. Yeah, absolutely. I did that with your Chrono Trigger video. Thank you very much. It's remarkably kind of you to sit and watch it. Yeah, my house.world was fantastic. Right, I'm not going in the hole without a lantern. That's true. So can we please... Every week a different hole. Wormhole, wet hole. Yeah, there was last week. It was the the crunchy wormhole, wasn't it? <laughs> From the the quest it was on. Hang on, I I literally I genuinely can't go down without a lantern because I'll get killed. Kitty cat, thank you for bringing me a lantern. I appreciate that. See, this is this is the privilege that you get when you decline the trade. What are you doing? There we go. This is the privilege that you get when you are a streamer. You get people with max capes giving you things. Thank you. Use Tinderbox on Lantern. I need a fire-making level of four. My fire-making level is one. Kitty cat could... Okay, no, stop it. Stop. Let's start, start grinding. What a horrible thing to say. One candle, thank you. Let's see if this works. This might blow up. If this blows up, we've got uh, we've got teleport tabs. Thank you, Kitty Cat. Use tinderbox on candle. Beautiful. Use rope on dark hole. Push the rope into the dark hole. Grow up. This is RuneScape. First time catching a stream, seeing so many shorts of you on YouTube. I'm gonna let you down. I'm sorry, man. Those shorts, they are like the funniest bits out of four hours. You're gonna be in the trenches with the rest of us finding the crap bits. Thank God you're streaming. I have a fever, and none of the other streamers are follower online. Always the goat. I like the fact that in order to be the best, all I had to do was outlast everyone else. Like, it's not even... Like, if, if any of the others were online, you go and watch them. It's fine. I'll take it. I'm, I'm technically... It's like I've won a consolation prize. I'm the best by default. I've won because nobody else entered. Fantastic. That's my favourite one. 
I might be your last choice, but currently I'm the only choice. So I'll take it. All right. You got to know, you got to know where you stand. You got to know when to hold them and sometimes when to fold them. And if someone says that I'm the best choice because nobody else is on, I'm okay with that. What am I? Yeah. What are you going to do with your circle? Just turn up and win pretty much. Okay. Hello. The gnome is munching on a wormhole. Whatever floats your boat, mate. We don't kink shame in this house. Would not have imagined a worm is big enough for that, but you know what? Sometimes you make it work. <laughs> what accent does Gluff have? <laughs> the the wormhole eating accent. Can I help, human? Can't you see? I'm eating. That's, he's talking into the wormhole. The gnome continues to eat. The king asked me to inform you that the Deconia rocks have been taken. Surely not. I should have known. This human could get... I'd like you to note as well that when I'm doing this wormhole eating accent, I'm making the hole with my... That's a gif right there. I'm making the hole with my hand. And I'm occasionally, this is this is the acting degree coming through. Occasionally, my tongue is going in. You know, it's not just I should have known the humans are going to invade. No, 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 that's not enough. Some of you have subscribed. You want quality, all right? You need depth. Some of you in the chat are saying, "What the fuck?" All right? No, no. Listen, right? Just go with me on this, all right? It's an adventure we're all going to go on. The plane's taken off. We can't land yet. We're, we're coming. We're all going together. We need more depth in the hole, and that's what you're going to get. This is content. This is what I'll imagine someone. Oh, I've never played old school RuneScape before. I wonder. I, I've, I'll go and watch a Twitch streamer. Maybe they'll tell me what old school RuneScape is really like. And the first thing they get is make the hole with your hand and stick your tongue in. I should have known the humans are going to invade. See? It's not just talking. There's depth to it. There's characterization. Old school RuneScape. Uh, an anonymous gifter is gifting five tier one subs. I'm sorry, but thank you for doing that. That's remarkably kind of you, but I'm not changing. I'm not stopping. All right. There's a lot of first time viewers in the chat. We This is very much a trial by fire. You need to, you need to know exactly what you're up for with this stream. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. This is what's going to happen. So this is normal. Unfortunately, yes. This is pretty much what you're going to be up to. Does he know he's live? Does he know he's live? Look, I'm gonna... <laughs> Thank you for telling me to click the door, Ash. Ash is so impatient. She's like, John, click the door! You said, does he know he's live? Let's be real. Wouldn't it be a little bit more concerning if I was just sat in my room by myself, tonguing my handhole? I'll tell you what else I've got, along with being absolutely bloody melting in the UK, because it's like 31 degrees right now, which is incredibly hot. I'll tell you what I have got. That's what I've got. I went to the shop and I bought some smart water. And I'll tell you why, because this is going to make me smart. I've actually got two bottles of smart water in case one of them doesn't contain the knowledge I was hoping it would contain. You know, in one of those bottles of smart water is advanced physics somewhere. The more I drink, the smarter I'm going to get. Liquid knowledge. So yes, there's a there's a water brand called Smart Water. Again, not sponsored. Uh, we bought them because they were cheap at Costco. And uh, it's, if anything, it's efficient. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm learning. I'm knowledging while I play. I'm gaining knowledge. That sip was advanced calculus. I now know that. Who knows what the next sip will be? Maybe it will be geography, maybe history, maybe PE, who knows, maybe woodworking. Maybe it'll be cringy memories in 4K. Oh, cringy me Why are you laughing at PE? Physical education, that's what English kids used to call it. We'd be in school, like, oh, we've got PE next. And that means that if you were lucky, if you were in an English school like I was, and again, I understand most of my viewers aren't English, but this is my stream. If you were very lucky, what would happen is the teacher would unclip the massive apparatus from the wall, whether it's one of those kind of wooden square frames or big metal colourful frames, and swing out the apparatus into the middle of the room, and you'd get to use 
the apparatus. Oh, that was a good day, that was. That was a very good day of climbing on the apparatus. Always sign me up for the climbing frames. Some of you were like, what? What are you on about? Oh, yeah, the wall. I mean, the apparatus never saw use beyond like the first two years because too many kids kept falling off. Maybe you'd put out the, the blue crash mats on the floor. And in English schools, there were two types of blue crash mats. There were the big, thick, soft blue crash mats, which would genuinely save you if you fell onto them. And then there were the incredibly thin blue crash mats, which were, for all intents and purposes, as hard as the floor. And the teacher would be like, oh, put the crash mats out. I'm like, why? Why? You're doing nothing. All you're doing is making the room smaller by putting the crash mat on the floor and landing on it. You'll do just as much damage. I would bounce more on the wood. It's... That's a clip. Didn't even mean to say those words in that, that order, but... Oh, damn. <laughs> Quick, drink some smart water so I don't say more words. Hello, Mr. Streamer. What do I think about daylight savings? Oh, thank God you finally asked me about that. I've been saving up some very passionate opinions about daylight savings. Daylight savings is dumb. Can we just get rid of it? I'll tell you what, if I ever run for any form of political office, this is the this is the one thing I'll campaign on. That's it. People are like, what's your belief or anything? I'm like, I'm going to cancel daylight savings. That's all I'm going to do. As soon as that's done, I'm out. I'm gone. For those of you who are unaware, the UK actually has two time zones, and we cycle between them every six months. How dumb does that sound? So we have what's called GMT, which is Greenwich Mean Time, and then BST, which is British Summer Time. And what happens is every six months in spring, the clocks go forward by one hour. And in autumn, the clocks go back by one hour. And we call it spring forward, fall back, which is the way it works. So GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, BST, British Summer Time. So BST is GMT plus one. So if I'm trying, and this happens actually quite a lot, if I'm trying to organise a meeting with someone who's you know, international, and I've had this happen recently, so someone works in America, someone works in, you know, Texas, California, New York, whatever, and they're like, oh, let's organise a meeting for 4pm GMT. I have to then contact them and go, did you mean 4pm BST? And they go, I, I don't know what that is. And I have to explain to them that England actually has two time zones and we cycle between them. And it always ends up with people being an hour early or an hour late. It's really strange. And the reason we have it is apparently for the farmers. And the farmers needed more daylight in order to farm more. And I kind of thought, of all the people who are not going to pay any attention to the actual time, but instead look at, you know, the sun, it would be the farmers. And it turns out that the farmers didn't actually mind what time it was, they just woke up when the sun rose. And everyone else got upset by this. Farmers just don't care what time it is, they just do the work they've got to do. And what it left with was every single year in Britain, I mean, you can freaking Google this, Coco, I'm going to follow you. Every single year in Britain, there is always a very passionate, very heated discussion about whether this year will be the year that we abolish British summertime and instead just stick to the entire thing being Greenwich Mean Time. Does the UK have a name that covers both GMT and BST? No. BST is just GMT plus one. I think they want to remove daylight savings. Oh yeah, they do. They want to remove daylight savings, but they never do it. Because it's easy to say that you're going to do something and very hard to actually do it. Because unfortunately, most governments in the world run off the, the general focus of that's how we've always done it. Tradition is just peer pressure from dead people. That's what it is. So whenever someone says, oh, that's how it's always been done. Okay, why? If you can give me a real... There is a, a philosophical concept that you should not knock down a fence until you know why the fence was built in the first place. There's a very interesting philosophical thing, because some people say, oh, I don't know why this is there, therefore, let's get rid of it. Okay, that's a very dangerous thing to, right, thing to say. If you don't know why something is there, then getting rid of it is a terrible idea, because you don't know what it's preventing, or what it's allowing. 
If you want to get rid of something, you need to absolutely understand what it's doing and be able to explain how removing it would not change something. It's like in programming. You may sometimes open some random code in programming and you'd be looking at me like, I've got no idea what this is doing. Don't remove it. Because if you don't know what it's doing, I guarantee it's doing something incredibly vital. Only when you know what it's doing do you need to remove it. So people are like, oh, we should just remove British summertime. Okay, what does putting the clocks forward one hour actually achieve? It gives people more sunlight. That's what it gives them. But that's it. it that you get more sunlight. Okay, so how about instead everyone just gets up a bit earlier and we go off. The sun doesn't care what time it is. I don't think any of the actual kind of natural processes of the world even know what time it is. They just do their thing. Just do the thing. Just be nature. Nature's not going to be like, oh shit, it's seven o'clock. I best get out of the sky. Firstborn man, please, Josh, notice me once more. Done. See? I live to serve. But you know what? Maybe I don't fully understand BST. Maybe I need to have another sip of smart water to get smarter. That's made me a lot smarter. Now I understand philosophy. F phil <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> nope, I'm sticking with the first pronunciation. I now understand philosophy. I am now a philosopher. An attempt was made. Thank you, Drongo. I tried to get smarter. What on earth is smart water? I'm not taking the piss. That's what it's called. It's water infused with knowledge. Knowledge. I keep it in my garage next to my Lamborghinis. Next to my bookshelf. You know what's on my bookshelf? That's right. Smaller Lamborghinis. And you know if you open those tiny Lamborghini boots... You know what's in that tiny Lamborghini boot? That's right. Tiny bookshelves. And you know what's on those tiny bookshelves? That's right. Tiny bottles of smart water. It's smart water, Lamborghinis and bookshelves all the way down, boys. All the way down. Many, many leather-bound books. And my apartment smells of rich mahogany, without a doubt. Is there also water for emotional intelligence? No. Rocky, Rookie, so you call constantly talking high energy. Ah, oh, Rookie, you and me are going to get on really well. I can, you and me, peas in a pod, mate. We are going to have a really good time because you're going to be contrarian to everything I say. And I'm going to look up what you type and I'm going to think, is this worth riffing on? That's going to be the thing. Is it really? He is seeking attention, but it's OK. I mean, Bat, so am I. The difference is I'm just better at it. Um, Chob says, stop, he's using you for content. That's fine, I'm using him for content. It's a mutually beneficial agreement. The qu I'm going to read what he puts and I'm going to think, is this worth riffing on? I mean, this is almost like, it's like I'm being provided Mystery Science Theatre, you know, 3,000 scripts. The problem is that it's just not a very good script writer. I'm trying as hard as I can to really kind of work here. I'm trying to make this work. We all need attention. Don't act like anyone doesn't. You're not an enlightened sage. That is true, Rookie. I am not an enlightened sage. I am an enlightened bard. I never liked the sage class. I much prefer the ability to play with all the instruments. That just, it worked on my style a lot better. I'm playing Coldplay on my piano because you are British. I mean, Rookie, that's not like a law. You don't have to do that. Just because you're talking to somebody who's British, you don't mean like, oh, quick, better break up the piano and bust out some cold play. This is the most amount of people that I think have gone to do the Black Knight's Fortress quest in one go. Hot drinks are a good idea on a hot day. Yes, they are. In fact, I'll probably take another quick uh, water break before we fully start the, uh, the Black Knight's Fortress quest. We'll get there and then we'll be like, right, water break. In fact, I've got another bottle of smart water. I don't know what I'm on about. Another bottle of smart water here. Maybe this one contains the knowledge I need. Bottle of water, as the British say. That sip was just knowledge about grammar and syntax and about when you should use a semicolon. I'm hoping that by drinking lots of smart water, I become lots of smart. That's my plan. I love me a good semicolon. When the author could have chosen to end a sentence but didn't. Makes me become more better. It does. It makes me become more think. You know? Smart water is when I want to be smart. 
energy drinks are when I want to be stupid faster. Just that, that is how you should carry a chicken. Just stick your arm straight through its body. Just impale it. That's, if you're carrying a chicken in any other way than entirely wrapped around your forearm, this is a very, very old puzzle. This, I think, this is actually an ancient puzzle. Does anyone know when this puzzle was actually made? Maybe Smart Water knows. For those of you who aren't aware, if you just joined the stream, I'm drinking bottles of Smart Water because the more sips I take, the smarter I get. And what I'm thinking is all the knowledge that I need in my life is in this bottle somewhere. I've actually got a crate of Smart Water downstairs. This is not an ad. And if it was an ad, it would be an ad for Costco, which is where I bought the Smart Water from because it is ridiculously cheap. But I decided, you know what? There's probably some knowledge in this bottle somewhere. I'm going to keep drinking it until I get the knowledge. Is this the bottle that contains the knowledge of random old riddles? No, that was the knowledge of how medieval weapons are named. Back in medieval days. Okay, someone fact check me on this, right? Because when I was a kid, we went to a, a castle kind of open day thing, if you will, and there were reenactors and there were LARPers and there were medieval recreationists. It was super cool. There, there was a dude there that effectively that taught us something. And I want to I want to check it in case anyone actually knows better than I do. Back in the medieval times. When they had halberds or axes or spears, sometimes when forging, they would be left over with random bits of metal. Okay, like random spikes, random curls, random cuts. And instead of melting them back down because they were too small to be used, they would kind of weld them or hammer them or pin them onto the shaft, if you will, of the, the halberd or the spear. So you had bits of random metal spikes sticking out down the actual wooden handle itself. So if you missed the enemy with the end of the weapon, they might catch themselves on some of these metal things. And these metal kind of extremities, these spikes that weren't part of the design, they were just there, they were called flukes. F-L-U-K-E. A fluke. And that's where the saying, it was a fluke, came from, as in... I achieved what I meant to achieve, but in a way that I didn't intend to achieve it. So if the enemy attacked you and you swung at them and you missed them with the head of the weapon, but you just managed to rip them apart with the little random metal spikes down the thing, it would be like, oh yeah, that was a fluke. The question is, is that right? I don't know. I, I was taught that in school, but I don't know if that's correct. I don't even know where you'd check that. I do not know if that's right. It sounds it sounds plausible. That's the scary... It sounds plausible. And school, as someone has just put in the chat, would never lie to you. Everything you've learned in school is correct. Apart from the whole taste bud tongue map thing. Anyone else get taught that? It is. The density of receptors varies. It's like... But it's not... It's literally untrue. Uh, I don't need to be one for it, but I'm a... Interesting. There is no such thing as a tongue map. There we go. We've started an argument in Twitch. I love it. Petty shrimp. It was originally a term in the 19th century for lucky strikes in billiards. Can't see anything for earlier. Oh, okay. Are you telling me that the, the fat bearded man at a medieval renaissance fair who owned his own halberd lied to a bunch of school children. Because I just can't see a world where that's real. I, I cannot imagine a world where a medieval recreationist lies. And you know what? If that is the world, I don't want to live in that world. That's a, that's a terrible world to be in. If there's one demographic we should be able to trust, it's large men with halberds and beards. Otherwise... Where is the trust? Where is it? Maybe I should drink some more smart water. Maybe medieval random knowledge is down here somewhere. Will I ever disappear down the Final Fantasy XIV rabbit hole? The problem is that down the Final Fantasy XIV rabbit hole, you find Zeppler, and she scares me. So I am terrified that when I return to Final Fantasy XIV, I will be attacked by an army of bunnies. You seem to have a really good life. All this attention, all this diction. I do, Rookie. 
I mean, there are moments in my life that are difficult. You're still here. But we keep going, don't we? We keep on. We try to overcome the adversity and try and enjoy the moments that, that we can enjoy as a, as a community, as a team together. I'm not actually being cruel to you. It's okay. I appreciate you acting as like a bouncing board. This is good. Every, every story needs a good villain, and maybe one day we'll find ours. But until then, you'll do. But can a villain truly be good? Look, the best villains are heroes of their own story. That's the best way to put it. The absolute best villains are heroes from their own perspective. The best villain I've said before in media is Ed Harris in The Rock. The film The Rock with Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, uh, phenomenally, phenomenally good film. And the reason he's a great villain is because everything he does is heroic from his own point of view and from the point of view of his men and of the support that he's got. Fantastic. Magus in Chrono Trigger. A good villain, a good... In now, a good villain doesn't necessarily mean a villain that you like because they are likable. I mean, Handsome Jack is the example people always give from Borderlands. Handsome Jack is likable, no doubt, but not necessarily a good villain, as in the fact that they are always villainous. Megamind is an excellent example of a good villain because they are the hero in their own story and end up being a, an actual hero. So Hans Gruber, again, he is a hero in his own mind. No one who is just completely evil makes a good villain. What you very much need is you want to find someone who you look at and go, I get it. I get it. I absolutely get it. I mean, what would be a good villain? People are putting suggestions in the chat. GLaDOS a good villain? Yeah, she just wants to test, man. I get it. Who's the main villain in Dark Souls? Entropy. Time. Depending on how you want to play you. That kind of stuff. Joffrey. <sighs> Joffrey thinks he's a hero, but he does nothing heroic. He's a, You love to hate him. I like it when it's not necessarily good guy versus bad guy. It's I can see both sides of this story. I think that a good kind of final confrontation between good versus evil, if you will, is when both sides are good in their own way. That is... That is a difficult one to find. As a former teacher, I sympathise with GLaDOS wanting to test. Absolutely. Is Anakin a villain? A villain? <sighs> what was weird was that... And this is, again, something that I find difficult about Star Wars. Anakin gets thrown into lava. 90% of his body covered in horrific burns. Climbs up the side of a mountain and survives, and yet Padme dies because she's a bit sad in the most advanced medical facility in the entire empire. Like, this dude is in the most unsanitary place imaginable, clinging to death. Now, clinging to life is super close to death, and he's like, "Hi, right, lads, I'm fine. And his partner is like, I've had two kids... Me, me, me boyfriend's just killed a load. Guess that's me done. I just die. It's, yeah, it's almost, yeah, that's a good way of putting it in the chat. He wanted to live, and she very much didn't, and then some midichlorians happened. When you think about Anakin's story, it's similar to the story. Yeah, it's... Ooh, you mentioned Lucifer. Who's the bad guy? Oh, that's a debate I do not want to get into, because I am not, I'm not smart enough. But I can be. Okay. You want a good bad guy? A bad guy that you can understand why they're doing it? Jean-Luc Picard has just been taken to the Borg vessel. And then unfortunately, Locutus of Borg steps forward. The camera cuts back to Riker, acting captain. And he simply says, Fire. Fire. And then the series ends, and it was one of the best bits of television in history, because you then had to wait for it. I was talking to a friend of mine recently. It is inevitable that I will age. I know, that's a horrible thought, but it's going to happen. 
I'd love you to do the commentary while I make love to my wife. Lovely vocals. Pingu, not a problem at all. I do charge by the hour, though, so what we're doing with those extra 55 minutes, entirely up to you. Let me play some Switch, we sit down, you know, play a game of Warhammer, something like that. Whatever you want to do. We'll sort something out. <laughs> oh, oh, the amount of jokes in the chat right now. My goodness. My goodness. Uh, bonjour from France. Bonjour, everyone from France. Comma Tapel 2. See? I speak French as well. Um, I'm trying to think of the other French words I know. <sighs> Bibliothèque. Petit Falou. That's French. Uh, what else is French? Voulez vous? No, I'm not going to say that because some of you know what it means. Um... At least you didn't say baguette. I did say baguette. That's like one of the few things that omelette du fromage. That it, did I say petit falou? Yeah, it's French. Omelette du fromage. I watched Dexter's Lab as a kid. I speak. Uh, I speak fluent French. We all know that. Do you remember that weird? Um, it was a thing, wasn't it? It was a. It was a legend that if you train in martial arts, you have to go and register your hands as lethal weapons with the local constabulary. The local force. Oh, yes, yeah, so I've actually got a black belt, which means when I get on a plane, I've got to have two security guards with me at all times because my hands count as lethal weapons. No, they don't. I've got two black belts in two different styles. I'm still an absolute clumsy idiot. Humans are not as slick as we think we are. You ever bit your own tongue? What a strange thing to be able to do. The human, the perfect killing machine, will occasionally forget where the coffee table that's been in their house for the last six years actually is and just decide to, you know, boot it really hard. People think that human beings are the perfect killing machine. We get dizzy if we stand up too fast. All right? There's a lot of problems that we can deal with. Next you'll tell us the waistcoat isn't real. Where did that rumour come from that if you have a martial arts black belt you have to register your hands as lethal weapons? I think it came from the same kid that said that Marilyn Manson had his rib removed. The same kid that, you know, had an uncle that worked for Nintendo and that Mew was under the truck. Do you think it's weird that collectively, as a society, we seem to have collective rumours that every school kid knows, yet no one spoke to each other? Wasn't that weird that if you, if you were, and this mostly applies to like, I think UK primary schools, but it probably applies to American primary schools as well. You heard a rumor in school, you went to another school for a bit, you heard the same rumor, and yet no one had talked to each other. How? It's like the cool S. Everyone drew the cool S. If we absolutely have to agree on a symbol for humanity, it needs to be the cool S. That's what it is. If you don't know what the cool S is, just Google the cool S. You'll, you'll, you'll draw it. Everyone knows what it is. The S. It's like many of you in the chat, I have probably not met face to face. And many of you, I probably don't, you know, didn't go to school with. I probably didn't go to high school with. We probably don't have a lot of collective kind of shared experiences. But if I were to say I just lost the game, how many people in chat know what I'm on about? You know, humanity may be divided across distance, across time, across boundaries, across religions, across politics. Humanity is divided in many, many ways. And yet, all of us are playing the game. And all of us just lost. It's okay. Someone's like, what's going on here? It's community stuff. Babysitting. Yeah, pretty much babysitting me. I find that, I find that deeply beautiful in a way. That no matter how divided the world may be, we can all find those kind of strange... You guys seen Spaced, the TV show Spaced, where 
they agree that all men have that unspoken language that if you very slowly start a shootout, like if you pull fake guns out of fake holsters, other guys will join in. It's true. 